Welcome back. Uh, glad you're here. We may soon finally know why a transgender man killed six people, including three children, in a Nashville school massacre. Get this. Nearly a year later, a judge has ordered the FBI to finally hand over the shooter's manifesto. The agency had refused, arguing its, its release and saying this, and I'm not buying it, could reasonably be expected to interfere with the enforcement proceedings if we released it. Well, the judge claimed the Bureau failed to support their position, no joke, with sufficient clarity or detail. The order is part of a lawsuit filed by the parent company on the, of the Tennessee Star newspaper. Audrey Hale, known as Aiden, showed up for the Covenant Christian School that she attended as a child. The 28-year-old was shot dead by police. I believe holding on to the manifesto was the FBI and the Biden administration because they want to downplay the violence committed by transgenders and what type of drugs they might have been on. Meanwhile, Bonnie Willis giving up on putting Donald Trump on trial before the November election? Not really. The Georgia DA reportedly pushing for a trial date as soon as this summer. This despite narrowly avoiding being disqualified herself, I think she should have been, over her relationship with her ex-lover and lead prosecutor Nathan Wade. And she's not out of the woods yet. The judge allowing Trump and eight co-defendants to appeal the ruling that keeps Willis on the 2020 election interference case, the big RICO case. Now, defense attorney Ashley Merchant led the effort from the beginning to disqualify Willis. You never wrote him a check? Ma'am, I don't have checks. Cash is uh, fungible. I don't remember the dates, but you're an officer of the court. I'm going to hope you're telling the truth now. Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear, because you've lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth, Judge. And this is, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a meltdown. Merchant exposed the improper relationship after getting tipped off by Wade's former divorce attorney, Terrence Bradley. But con conveniently in court, Bradley couldn't recall much until he was shown a copy of the text messages between him and Ashley Merchant. Watch this reaction. The first page starts off by saying, Miss Merchant, like just date, don't hire him. Do you think it started before she hired him? You see that? Yeah, dang. So many moving parts to this case, with evidence even proving ties to the White House. Invoices from Nathan Wade that you're seeing right here. Don't say the White House didn't know. Defense attorney Ashley Merchant joins us right now to tell us where we're at in the case and where all the discovery came from. She represents Michael Roman in this. Ashley, great to see you. Obviously, you've done a, 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 a done a great job. First off, can you tell me where the case is at now and why you might not believe that Fonnie Willis really wants this case to start in the summer? Yeah, you know, where we're at right now is we've actually filed for an appeal. The judge gave us that right. Now we're waiting on the appellate courts to decide if they're going to let us appeal it. And if they do, it's going to take about six months for that process to, to work its way through the appellate system. But I really don't think that this, this push to to try this case this summer is genuine because there's so many moving parts and there's so many things that could happen if they really wanted this case to move forward. If Fonnie Willis wanted it to move forward, she could recuse herself. She could have a neutral, disinterested prosecutor who could get up to speed very quickly on the case if they actually wanted to prosecute all of this. They could narrow down the indictment. They could sever out certain defendants. They could do a lot of different things that they're not doing that signals that they really don't want to try this case quickly. Right. Uh, and she now has two opponents in an election. And I guess if we saw more of Fonnie Willis, that, judging by what we've seen so far, it could really hurt her keeping that seat. However, you would have to think there's pressure on her to get this done because every Democrat wants to destroy Trump before, uh, before the November election. Right. And the August date that they're proposing, I mean, that would literally put President Trump on trial during the election. There's no way this case would be wrapped up by November. The DA's office has already said it would take several months to try. And I don't even right. think that's a fair estimate. I think it would take longer than that. So you would have someone running for office who's sitting in trial at the exact same time. And I think that's the goal here. You know, actually, it's pretty clear that most people, if they cared about the case, would have stepped aside. Do you think this is a celebrity thing? She likes the spotlight. She wants to be famous. She wants a show on court TV. I can tell you, I've done this for 20 years, and I've never had a prosecutor 
not step aside when someone challenged them. I've never had a judge not step aside. It is very rare. Normally, if someone raises any impropriety, you just say, give it to someone else, because there's tons of other prosecutors. We have 49 other elected district attorneys in the state of Georgia that could review this case and could pick mm -hmm. it up and are well equipped to do that. So I think it's very clear that there's some other mm -hmm. motive here. You know, I watch everybody just say, there's no link to any of these cases in the White House. That's totally separate. But don't you think you've proven differently beyond those invoices, the meetings in Athens, and there might be other things. What are they trying to keep from you? I think there's definitely a link to the White House. You know, we have also done open records for all of Ms. Willis's reimbursement, her travel schedule, things like that, and they've denied that. And those are things that we should be able to get through the Open Records Act. So we actually had to file a lawsuit under the Open Records Act because they're refusing to give us all those. And those would show if she was reimbursed to travel to the White House, dinners, hotel, flights, things like that. So I think there's something that they're trying to keep away out of our view. Uh, you have a chance to meet with other lawyers because you have, what, 17, 18 people on trial in this RICO case. What's been the former president's reaction to what you were able to do over those few weeks on trial? I think everybody has been very happy that there's been some transparency brought to this situation, including the former president, including all of the defendants in this case. Um, you know, they've always felt that they were sort of persecuted right. and that this was this was not, um, you know, a fair and just process. And so shedding light on that has been something that everybody has embraced. Were you surprised how much you were able to discover in real time, how much unfolded that you couldn't have anticipated, even from Fonnie Willis taking the stand? What were your thought process as this went on for hours and hours? You know, I was shocked um, because they had fought so hard to keep her off the stand. They were literally arguing a motion to try and keep her off the stand when she walked in. So, you know, that was kind of surprising um, since they had spent so much time trying to keep her from the stand. But, you know, the evidence, it just sort of, it's one of those things. You start to find things and then more develops. And once we brought forward the motion, that's when the floodgates really opened. That's when a ton of people started calling and giving us other information, corroborating tips, um, things that really told us that we we had uncovered something and there was a lot more to this. And you knew these people. You knew Fonnie Willis before this case. You knew I his did. business partner before this case. How did that challenge you? That was difficult. I mean, that was probably one of the most difficult things because I have known Miss Willis for 20 years. I've known Nathan Wade for 20 years. Um, you know, it's always difficult because it's still a small legal community, this criminal right. legal community. So it's always hard, you know, to be making allegations right. like this against someone that's a fellow member of the community, but it's the right thing to do. And right. it's the only way that my client is going to have a fair trial. Fannie Willis, obviously, it, to me, my judgment, unethical. Is, are we seeing the same thing with Letitia James? In New York. You know, I think I, I think what we need here is transparency. I think that's what we need in all of these cases. And when people try to fight transparency and they try to fight people looking behind the curtains, that's what bothers me and that's what scares me. And I think we're seeing that across the board. All right. In so many cases, it's hard to keep them straight. Uh, Ashley Merchant, you really stood yeah. out. I look forward to talking to you again because this isn't over, right? Thank you. It's not. No, it's not. Okay. Ashley Merchant, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.